the Bolton and Paul turret is one of the latest developments in aeroplane armament. It provides for fire in any direction, independent of the movement of the aircraft. A special interrupter gear ensures that no damage is done to the rudder or any other part of the firing plane. Powered with current from the aircraft supply, the turret is normally operated electro-hydraulically. Here the turret is shown operated under power on a stand. The rear half of the cupola has been removed so that a clearer view may be obtained. It can be seen that the turret is a self-contained unit and it is only necessary to connect it to a 24 volt accumulator to obtain any movement the turret can perform when fully installed within the aircraft. Note the considerable depression of the guns obtainable. Begin the daily inspection with a general inspection of the turret for damage and security. Examine the transparent panels of the cupola for cracks and other damage. Clean as necessary. Ensure that the panel in front of the site is not scratched. When inspecting a turret installed in an aeroplane, pay, pay particular attention to the 12 mounting bolts. Empty the cartridge cases and link containers. Ensure that the fasteners are properly closed and the containers secure. It is essential that the empty shells be prevented from falling out of the containers as they are very likely to jam between the base of the turret and the decking of the aeroplane. Damage such as this must be repaired immediately before the aeroplane is flown again. Inspect the hydraulic pipe connections for leaks and security. Inspect the flexible piping for kinking and damage. Set the turret in the free position by rotating the lever on the left hand side of the turret towards the front. Check the manual operation of the turret rotation and the elevation and depression of the guns. Check all fuses and see that all spares are in place and of the correct value. The relay solenoid fuse is a 5 amp fuse while the two firing solenoid fuses are of 10 amp. As the solenoid fuses occupy the same box, particular care is required in carrying out this inspection. The two panel lamp fuses are of 5 amps and each is contained within its own fuse box. For each fuse in use, a spare is carried within the cover of the fuse box. The power circuit fuse is of 40 amp capacity and occupies a separate box beneath the main switch box. Set the turret in the engaged position. Check all the electrical circuits in the turret by switching on all lamps. Check the first panel lamp, the second panel lamp, and the sight lamp. The fire and safe switch should be put to the fire position during this inspection only. Do not forget to return it to the safe position after completing the inspection. Check all actions of the turret and of the guns. Ensure that the firing solenoids are operating correctly.
bleed air from the turret hydraulic system. The presence of air in the system can be detected by roughness and uneven operation of the turret. Replenish the oil contents of the sump as necessary. Use only the special oil provided for this purpose. Inspect the gun attachments and mountings for damage and test the gun recoil mounting springs for correct functioning. To do this, press the guns backwards against the springs and ensure that they return the guns to the normal position. The recoil springs are mounted on the underside of the guns as shown. See that the blast tubes are not damaged and check them for correct functioning. See that the gun guards are securely fixed. Check the ammunition boxes. Check the feed chutes, rollers, and link chutes for damage and security. Clean the gun sight and check it for security. Lubricate the gun shutters and gun fire interrupter gear as necessary. The grease is best applied with the fingers. Surplus grease should be wiped off to prevent the transparent panels of the cupola being smeared. Use only anti-freeze grease, stores reference number 34A-49. Inspect the safety belt anchorages for security. The electrical distributor is shown mounted within the aeroplane before the turret is installed. The leads forming part of the aeroplane wiring are attached to their appropriate terminals on the outside of the distributor. The leads are tied or taped together to facilitate their passage through to the master block. In installing the turret, it is best to introduce it over the tailplanes and between the rudders. A stretcher between the slings should always be used prevent bending of the integral lifting eyes. As the turret is guided into position, the leads previously seen tied together are fed upwards and the spline on the distributor engaged with the internal spline at the base of the turret. This calls for careful lowering of the turret to prevent damage to the distributor shaft. The wires from the aeroplane pass through the base of the turret and into the distributor block. When the leads have been attached to their correct terminals, make sure that no loose tools have been left in the turret and that all gear is correctly stowed. Finally, sign the daily inspection certificate. Remember, upon the skill and care of the ground crew depends the life of the air crew, and perhaps victory or defeat in battle.